This is the Volkswagen ID4, the first all-electric model that Volkswagen will release here in Australia. And the Tiguan-sized ID4 will launch locally in about a year from now at around the price of a Tiguan 162 TSI. So the ID4 isn't supposed to cost the earth. Now in today's video, I'm gonna take you on a walk around of the new ID4. I'll show you what it looks like outside, what the interior is like, and we'll also discuss how far you'll get on a charge and what it's going to be like to charge this vehicle. But before we get started, hit subscribe down below and the notification bell. The first thing you notice about the ID4 is that it isn't a design showcase like the Hyundai Ioniq 5 or Kia EV6. And that's the entire point. Volkswagen says that this car is really designed to be thoroughly mainstream and normal, just like a Tiguan is today. And I can see the point of that. This vehicle is all about trying to make people comfortable to move to an electric SUV for their next family car. So here at the front, you can see we've got these tidy, clean headlights, IQ lights, meaning they're adaptive LEDs here at the front, some cool light signature work there. And then you'll also see the Volkswagen badge, which is actually white on this pro performance trim. And it's echoed by white writing on the back of the car too. Now there's no traditional grill because of course there's no combustion engine in this car, nor is there even a motor at the front because interestingly, the ID4 is rear wheel drive. There will be an all wheel drive dual motor GTX sporty version that will come later but the range will launch in Australia with at least one rear wheel drive spec, perhaps two, one being lower cost and one being this higher end pro performance trim. Looking further down the front end of the car though, you see some diagonal pattern inlets down there. There is a little bit of cooling that occurs at the front of the car to keep the machinery and the big battery a little bit more cool on the move. But all in all, you'd say it's a tidy looking front end and that the front overhang, and in fact the whole front bonnet is incredibly short. But because the firewall is so far forward with the ID4, there isn't a frunk on this vehicle. Now, as we start to walk down past that short cab forward front end on the car, we see the 19 inch alloy wheels fitted to this pro performance spec. They are aero wheels, so they've got sort of these black plastic pieces covering what would be traditional spokes, but I think they look okay and it bodes well for ride quality because the tires are really chunky. So hopefully Volkswagen Australia sticks with sensible sized wheels like the ones fitted to this Irish specification ID4. Pirelli Scorpion electric tires on this car. We've got a trim grade indicator here on the side. And then we start coming down and we notice it's a really nice blue color, this car. It shines at least under these lights and it pairs quite nicely with uh, the black roof here. And as they say, black and blue should never be seen without a color in between, which is why I imagine Volkswagen has gone for this anodized silver finish up here and nice silver roof racks as well that lend a bit of practicality to the car. Now those blades extend right down here into these extended haunches. You've got a charging port here that I'll return to in just a moment but let's check out what the back of the ID4 looks like. Stepping here around the back of the ID4, you see the striking contrast between the deep blue color of this vehicle and the fully lit LED center light here that stretches across the back and the white detailing on the Volkswagen badge and the ID4 nomenclature also looks pretty cool. And it's all finished off quite nicely with this gray rear diffuser down here. And while we're here, let's have a quick look at the boot that sits underneath this power tailgate. Measuring at 543 litres, it's very similar to that in the Tiguan. And you don't have to leave your charging cables strewn in the boot because there's a lovely little underfloor storage space where you can leave them. Sadly, underneath there, there isn't a spare tyre, at least not on this vehicle. There's a goo kit instead, but final Australian specs are yet to be determined. You do get a net fitted in the boot so your stuff doesn't roll around and cause noise, and it's all finished rather nicely back here with plenty of hooks and a button here to silently close the power tailgate. So it's finished nicely. It's a handsome, pragmatic looking vehicle. Well, the ID4 is sized like a Tiguan and it's gonna be priced like a Tiguan 162 TSI, at least in the specification that I'm sitting in here. It doesn't look like one outside and nor does the interior follow the design language of Volkswagen's combustion powered vehicles. Instead, it's really quite new and quite different in here and that's quite refreshing. Although some people might miss the very handsome traditionalism of a car like the Tiguan's cabin. So what are we looking at here in the ID4? Well, first of all, it's worth remembering that this is a high spec car and this is a trim that will come to Australia. 
It might not be absolutely identical to this island spec vehicle that I'm sitting in here, but it's going to be very close. It's basically an ID4 with all of the fruit. And that starts with really sporty seats. These are like a sports seat option in Europe, but they might be fitted as standard here in Australia. And they're like a micro fleece or what Volkswagen calls art velours trim in a dark gray with white detailing and really cool ID perforations in the seat back. And from my first impression, they do feel comfortable, uh, but I'd have to do a few hours in the saddle before I could make a, a full determination. We're looking forward at a very different instrument cluster to what we're used to from Volkswagen. And that may be a good thing or not. The steering wheel itself feels familiar, covered in leather. The capacitive buttons certainly aren't to everybody's tastes, but you get used to them. And there's a subtle flat bottom on the wheel too. But behind it, there's an all new cluster, which is common to Volkswagen's ID vehicles. And it's a very small screen that just gives you the readouts you need right now, being your speed, the, uh, dr the car's adaptive cruise control and lane keeping systems, battery state of charge and range remaining. You don't have that full virtual cockpit type experience that we've come to expect of a Volkswagen at this price. And that's partially because you get a much bigger central screen than what Volkswagen normally puts into their cars. It's very high resolution, much higher res than the current Golf for instance. You get wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and Volkswagen's own Software is nice and easy to use and the screen feels snappy, which is great because in the Mark 8 Golf, it was quite laggy. We do still have the touch sensitive climate controls, which are not lit and that's still not great, but you get used to it. I've been living with my long-term Cooper Foreman tour for a while now and you do get used to all this stuff. Material quality is decent, but probably not quite to the highs that we used to see in Volkswagens. There's soft touch on the dash and on the tops of the doors here in the front, even if the grain of plastic isn't quite as nice as normal, but here right in front of the passenger is hard as is down here between the seats. But the thing is this uh, electric SUV is not going to be outrageously priced. So you get a big battery with over 500 kilometers of range WLTP. We probably can't expect every bit of tinsel that we would normally get on a combustion car until the price of batteries equalizes with combustion at some point in future. Now you might notice this fixed panoramic glass roof above me. Unfortunately, it doesn't open, but it does have a sunshade, unlike the Tesla Model Y, so it shouldn't be an issue in summer. And because these seats are not leather and they're not vinyl, they're not gonna heat up massively in summertime, which is great. Now, because this car sits on MEB, Volkswagen's dedicated electric vehicle architecture, the packaging is really good. So we've got a flat floor here in the front and in the back, loads of storage space down here, configurable cup holders, a bit like my old Mark 6 Volkswagen Golf, wireless charging, two USB-C ports, big air vents, and minivan style armrests, so they don't have to have a big installation for a central armrest here. And to be honest, this feels like, you know, Captain's Cherry feels good. And interestingly, you actually sit kind of down into the ID4. It looks like an SUV, but the driving position is quite sporty. So that's the front seat. Let's check out the back. Here in the back, the first thing you notice is how massive the space is for people that you stash back here. And that's interesting because the ID4 is only 4,584 millimeters in length, precisely. And that's interesting because the car looks much longer from how it's been designed outside and it's only a little bit longer than a short wheelbase Volkswagen Tiguan and yet the space in the back is chalk and cheese compared to that car and that all comes down to the fact it's on a dedicated electric vehicle architecture and so the firewall at the front there can be pushed all the way forward and liberate space in the interior mainly for people here in the back and it's basically literally like behind the front seat I've got a vast amount of legroom, tow room's good and headroom is okay. I've got another couple of inches underneath this glass roof and the body panels up here. Now, I'm being supported nicely by the seat base, so I could do a few hours back here. The only letdown is that for a vehicle that is going to range probably somewhere between maybe sixty dollars and $80,000, we've got this harsher material here on the windowsill. And the reason I say $80,000 is because the ID4 will be launching in Australia alongside the ID5 which is the coupe SUV version of the ID4, and that will sit at that slightly more expensive price point. But from my perspective, the practicalities of the wagon body ID4 probably make it superior, in my opinion. Now, we do get some extra stuff here in the back, including a flip down armrest with a couple of cup holders. We've got a pass through 
for skis that might be even more useful in the future ID4 GTX model which has dual motor all drive and 225 kilowatts of power and we've got air vents down here they're very low though but we do have air vents USB-C ports and a separate temperature zone for those here in the back pouches for storage as well decent sized door bins but all in all what you can say about it is that for a five seat SUV no third row yet the ID4 is very, very spacious. You'll get baby seats back here easily. You'll get your kids back here easily. It's really pragmatic. The ID4 sits on Volkswagen's MEB 400 volt electric vehicle architecture. And we know that Australia is going to heavily prioritize the biggest battery, which at the moment is the 77 kilowatt hour usable battery fitted to this pro performance model. WLTP range is an impressive 520 kilometers which translates to consumption of 14.8 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, or in the vicinity of what we're able to get from a Tesla Model Y on a good day here in Australia. So perhaps the real world consumption will be somewhere around 16 or 17 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, which is still really frugal for a family SUV like this. But because the ID4 sits on a 400 volt architecture, it can't charge as quickly as an Ionic 5 or a Kia EV6, which are 800 volt but charging speeds are still acceptable. Maximum AC charging is at 11 kilowatts, so that can really slash your charging times at home if you spend the money on an 11 kilowatt wall box. Of course, it can also charge at seven kilowatts or even off a three pin socket on a much longer time frame. But public charging is capped at around 170 kilowatts DC, which is still quick enough. This vehicle can recharge from 10 to 80% in under 40 minutes, which is still pretty good. And Volkswagen Australia is also considering whether to launch the vehicle with an integrated membership or a subsidized membership from a public charging firm like ChargeVox. And there'll be more to say on that later. So those are my first static impressions of the Volkswagen ID4. This midsize electric SUV is very deliberately not styled to be a statement, like many of the other electric vehicles that are entering the Australian market. It's handsome enough, but it's very pragmatic, and that was Volkswagen's whole point here. The ID4 is meant to make you feel at ease, comfortable to get out of something like a Tiguan or a competitive midsize SUV into a similarly sized car that's a bit roomier inside with a long range so you don't have to charge it all the time, entering the electric era with ease. That's what the ID4 is about. It's a people's car. And that's not the marketing speak, that's just how the ID4 strikes me. And I think that's interesting. Of course, we haven't driven it yet. So you're gonna to wanna to subscribe down below to get my thoughts when we do, because I'm very keen to see what the ID4, which weighs over two tons, is like to drive with its 150 kilowatt rear electric motor. So stay tuned for those thoughts. While you're down there, let me know your comments. Are you gonna order an ID4? Does this sort of EV interest you? Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching, Chasing Cars.